Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Sunday stream. We do a little bit of whatever I want today. Today we're doing our Halloween episode. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, Lunar, with the first. And thank you so much for the howl. I hope you guys have like really lovely Halloween plans, that you get lots of trick-or-treaters, that you go to parties, all kinds of fun things. Um, but we are going to be doing our Halloween stream today and we're gonna be playing some Monster Camp. So last year for Halloween, we played Monster Prom and there are actually some sequels to that game. There are some sequels to that game. One of them, the second game is called Monster Camp, which has all of our friends and more. So if you miss Polly as much as I did, we're gonna go hang out with Polly again, probably. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see. After playing that game, I have some like um, certain expectations and things going into the second one. Like I assume the gameplay is gonna be relatively similar with some updates and some changes and some improvements and things of that nature. But we're gonna find out together. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and get the game going. I've got it in Steam and uh, let's switch over to it. you can hear it can you see it you can see it now okay all right sweet so i have not done anything in this game this is totally blind except for opened it this morning and clicked on the settings so after we click this is everything that i've seen so i did change it to streamer mode on the credit song in the first one did give me some problems luckily this game has a streamer mode that i found but you know what the first one probably had a streamer mode and i just ignored it that's probably what happened but who knows but uh but we have streamer mode now for sure they also have inst instinct mode which i thought was really interesting it says it will hide the success and fail feedback from events making it a true narrative experience full of unexpected twists and i thought that was really interesting so but i'm not going to turn it on because i i <laughs> i need to know the points that i'm earning uh for these characters love so um <laughs> So yeah, um, I think looking at the levels, I'm going to turn the music down somewhat, because I feel like it's quite loud compared to me. So we're going to do that, but I'm going to leave the sound effects and the voice up, because from what I remember before, like, it's just interspersed. Like, this isn't voice acted or anything, so I will be doing the voices, just like before. If any, you know, if, if anybody's voice changed from last year to this year, that's not my fault. That's not my fault. That's past Karen's fault for not guessing future Karen's voice choices correctly so um you know don't don't compare last year's video to this one don't do that don't do that um so yeah okay that's the settings so that being said we're gonna play and i have to pay attention to like where my camera is if i'm covering words or whatever so we might we might do some layout adjustments because i don't really know what this game looks like but anyways there's apparently an online mode but we're just gonna click play we're just gonna click, click play um, voice interjections. Okay, so yes, it's still voice interjections, not fully voice acted. So yes, I want the effects. Yay. I do want that. Yay! That's Polly. That's that's beautiful Polly. Okay, it's still it's still multiplayer possibility, but I guess this one has online option as well. But we're we're just one player. Um, short game or full game? We're gonna do a full game. Do a full game. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers back when we were young and unafraid. Okay, my camera, it looks like my camera is like just a touch high. So let's scoochie her up. Not there, like that. Let's scoochie up like that. Okay, and then we'll scoochie the chat box up to match. There we go. Okay, that should be the right height for this game. So there we go. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights in inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Okay, so we have to choose. Um, this looks similar. We were Frankenstein girl before. I think we're still Frankenstein girl. Um, zombie boy, you can't see. He's playing. Well, yeah, you can a little bit. He's playing video game. We got the, little, the shadow, the shadow boy, and we've got fire girl. We're gonna be Frankenstein girl again. We're gonna be blue. Okay. Um, Vicky, but we're gonna name her Karen. Okay. K. I hate it when it's alphabetical and not QWERTY. It always confuses me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, yes, pronoun, what are my choices? Okay, we'll do she, okay. Let's go. Let's go. go. 
That's right. Let's go. Okay. Um, choose. Uh, oh, uranium lipstick, tardigrade plushie, coloring Hawaiian shirt, cult ring, sword of roar. Or, uh, chess two. <laughs> the sequel to chess. A uh, Hellfire Portable Barbecue Pocket Therapist, an MC or MC Griffin EP. Bruh, I don't know. Um, I definitely want this, Uranium Lipstick. Okay, oh, this is, okay, this is helping us figure out who we're gonna be going for, I can tell. Okay, we want also the um, Pocket Therapist. And we want the Hellfire Grill. Okay, yes. One might say that the monster prom has hardened us on the heights and lows of love. But no, in love, we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of summer love loomed over our hearts. Okay, so all progress erased from monster prom. What you did in monster prom is not relevant to monster camp. That's what I'm gathering. Okay. Close to last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just five weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain, everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on the me a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Joe Jojima? We're probably close. Um, a badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. We remember her from we remember her from before. She wasn't um, one of the main dateables. Um, Avari Mishra, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. She's also new. Calculester Hewlett Packard, <laughs> version 1.1, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Okay, he's also new. Delilah Aquino. So far, this is all new peoples. Where, where's my, where's, where's Polly? A buff blue demon and a warmonger who had set her sights on conquering Summer next. Damien LeVay. Oh, we know Damien. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer and who was profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. Okay, okay. I like, I like them. Him, her, I can't tell. So far, for sure. And the demon boy, of course. The bus trip was long, and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear. It all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. What's your favorite hobby? Okay, we have questions again. We have questions again, just like before. Raising succulent, saving the world, very anime workouts, being popular, crimes, um, and if or efficient farming. We're gonna go with crimes. Okay, oh, it's telling me, Damien. Oh man, crimes are the best hobby ever. I agree, Damien. I'm hoping crimes will be, oh wait, we have to do his voice, that's right. I'm hoping crimes will be one of the hobbies that evolves into a career if you catch my drift. I mean, if Al Capone and Richard Nixon could do it, why not me, right? Karen, maybe you and I could get into the crime biz together. It's never too early to start thinking about your future. That's true, Damien. We only had five weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Okay, just like Monster Prom. Okay, so Damien. Please, please to go. So apparently Damien was who we uh, were choosing. Okay. We have six on smarts, three on fun, and five on everything else. Okay. All right. So this kind of time around, we can choose woods, lake, camp dome, manor, or scout HQ. Okay. So we're going for Damien. I think we're going to go to the camp dome. I think we're going to go to the camp dome. Let's check it out. Today, you're playing the most dangerous Camp Dome game of all, Charm Wars. The rules are simple. You must gain charm by the end of the round or you will die instantly. Karen, you better earn some charm quick, like in the next 10 seconds or you're gonna fucking die. Holy shit, earn some charm already. <laughs> oh, okay, thank God, you just earned plus two charm. <sighs> that was way too close, oh my God. I was scared, I was so scared. Um, you return to your tent for some time alone after all the drama, but you should have known drama would follow you to your tent. You see Damien punching everything. 
Ah, fuck the mosquitoes. Why don't you suck the blood out of my fists? The mosquitoes, which you now realize are what Damien is actually trying to punch, seem more than happy to oblige. They swarm all over Damien's furious hands and all over everything else, including your attractive face, which immediately gets punched by Damien. <gasps> Whoa, is someone there? My punch sense is tingling. Hey, noob. Oh, it's you, Karen. I didn't see you there because I was blinded by my rage at the stupid mosquitoes. I understand, Damien. I fully understand. Seriously, I hate these little fuck buttons. They think they can just come over here and steal my blood. And I didn't even know they had fists, but it looks like one of them just punched you in the face. So not only are they stealing my blood, they're stealing my whole thing. Ugh. And the worst part is, I can't even do anything about them. Camp director Miss Weaving confiscated my mosquito killing machine gun because it exceeded the maximum number of machine guns allowed at camp. So rude. And all I have left is the stupid mosquito spray, but it turns out it's a mosquito stun spray, which just made them immune to skin Fight cancer. Me, dude. Or maybe it wasn't the spray. Maybe the mosquitoes are in league with the sun. I should have killed that solar son of a bitch when I had a chance. <laughs> maybe I can kill them by shooting blood out of my eyes, or shooting harpoons out of my harpoon gun, or shooting harpoons out of my eyes. Oh dear, it seems like Tamian's discovered an experimental new level of murderous rage. You'd better find a way to rid him of these mosquitoes, because you're the only one who should be allowed to bite that spicy red skin. True. Okay, here we go. We're gonna steal Damien's blood back from the mosquitoes in the most ambitious heist in camp's spooky history. Or, mosquitoes can't stand the smell of lavender, citronella, or lemon grass. Replace all of Damien's blood with essential oils. Okay, um, so our stats are good on the smarts, not so good on the fun. We got some plus charm. Okay, so I think, I think, because we have to pick what's good with the stats. If we remember from the other game, that's how it works. So you pick what matches the stats in your heart, okay? So we're gonna do, mosquitoes can't stand the smell of that just my work. Yeah, I knew it. Okay, essential oils, no blood. That's an awesome idea. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I need blood, right? If it did, it wouldn't be called blood. It'd be called essential blood. These oils are way more necessary. With Damien's blessing, you prepare a proprietary mixture of essential oils, including lavender oil, citronella oil, and Damien's personal favorite, crude oil. You assume you'd have a hard time actually replacing his blood, but it turns out it's really easy to find mommy blogs selling essential oil dialysis machines. Welcome back, Lunar. Welcome back. Thank you so much for the howl earlier, and happy Halloween, my friend. Yes, it's working. The mosquitoes are retreating, and I can feel my power increasing. Mm -hmm. Wait, is that power I feel or disorientation? I, I might, it, it might be disorientation. Oh shit! Was blood the thing they said was important to keep all of your circuit in your circulatory system? I should have done less arson in biology <sighs> class. Oh, oh, whatever. Dying is awesome. Have always wanted to punch God. <sighs> Hours later, in the extremely overtaxed spooky hospital, you're standing by Damien's bedside when he like wakes up. Masters of survival. Whoa! I'm alive. Hell yeah! And there are no mosquitoes anywhere in sight. Looks like blood isn't essential after all. Hello, Devon. How are you doing today? It's happening soon. You're gonna do so good. You're gonna do so good, Devon. How, how, how much longer? How much longer till she comes over? You're gonna, you're gonna do so good. I believe in you. Plot twist, it totally is. The doctors put Damien's blood back while he was passed out and you made them promise not to tell him because it would undermine his self-image. As for the mosquitoes, let's just say you've always wanted an excuse to secretly spray bug repellent on Damien every night while he sleeps. Nice. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. <laughs> Oh my god. We're getting the demon my first already. Kit. We're getting Just the demon in case. already. So happy. Okay. Alright. So the the camp dome helps us with charm. Um, so that's good. I'm gonna pick her up, just waiting for her to call that she's ready. She's gonna call soon. And she's gonna be so excited to see you. I believe in you, Devon. I believe in you. Okay. It's appropriate we're playing a dating sim while having this conversation. Because we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get our demon boy. Okay, so I think I think let's go to the woods. That day, while hiking through the woods, you find a tree with the words J plus S forever carved in it. Aww. Then on another tree, you find J is a liar and cheating hoe. That's less cute. Then on yet another tree, you find S. I know you banged like twelve people abroad in Europe. Don't dish what you can't take. <laughs> On the last tree, S, X, the S doxes J, and it turns out J lives on 788.9. <laughs> Plus two smarts lane. 
<laughs> Boy, you sure can learn a lot from trees. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you slip away with Damien and Calculester for a relaxing stroll through the forest. Not sure why this is the duo you picked for a relaxing stroll, but it's your life. Ten minutes into your walk, Damien checks his backpack. A horrified look spreads We're across his face. We're fucking lost! We... we don't have food! <laughs> ah, listening facts. My favorite game. Vending machines kill four times as many people as sharks do. The average human sheds 40 pounds of skin in their lifetime. Death is inevitable. <sighs> this isn't a fucking game, Calculuster. We're in the woods without any food. Does the word starvation mean anything to you? Not personally, no. Hmm. All right, clearly I'm the only person taking this seriously. We've got to figure out a way to survive, and we've got to do it fast. Cal, give me your leg. Why? And Damien? So I can eat it to survive! Come on, aren't you a supercomputer or something? Try to keep up. Mm -hmm. Though, I would be happy to help. My leg is composed entirely of metal and plastic, neither of which would be a good source of calories. Fucking metal! <laughs> I'm metal too, so this should be fine. Give me your leg to eat! Mm. Counterpoint, could we not instead order a delicious meal at the Forest McDonald's directly behind you? You turn around, and sure enough, there's a McDonald's in the forest. Thank the invisible hand of the free market. That just might work. <laughs> oh, wow, McDonald's. That's slightly better than eating a severed robot leg. Let's go check out the menu. But soon... Lame. <laughs> this menu sucks. Shamrock shake, but made of actual shamrocks. McDirt? Calculus or severed leg? <laughs> Flay a fish? <laughs> I swear, there's not a single thing on this menu that I'd be willing to- Oh shit. Damien is back, bitches! McRib! McRib is back! Thanks, Satan Almighty, McRib is back! You excitedly rush to the counter to place your order, but when you get there, the cashier tells you that they only take payment in acorns. Gah! What the dicks? They don't have any acorns? I don't have any acorns, but I need this McRib. There's gotta be something we can do. Cashier says they also take payment in Bitcoin, but you already spent all of yours on your subscription of monthly fantasy-themed anal beads. Looks like it's time for Plan B. Okay, we have a choice now. We have a choice now. Whew. Oh, Devon, whatever you just, whatever you just posted, it doesn't like come through properly. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that last message was after the hopefully. Okay. Politely explain to the manager that you have a nut allergy and ask for a hypoallergenic payment option. Order some nuts on Uber Eats. Um, okay. I think we politely explain. You ask for the manager, a middle-aged skunk who is disturbingly eager to please. He racks his brain for a hypoallergenic payment option and finally devises a solution. Your firstborn child. And it's just the sort of thing forest creatures are always asking for in exchange for favors. And they could use a child to work the fryer. You agree immediately. What a deal. May I chime in? I am not sure this is a wise trade, Karen. According to my data, the exchange rate of McRibs to children is not one-to-one. -one. <sighs> Don't you get it, Calculester? Karen isn't trading a child for McRib. She's trading a McRib for a child, eventually. You agree with Damien. In fact, you explain you were planning to adopt anyway. There's already so many children in the world, why make more? <laughs> and if that fails, you can always kidnap a random kid and indenture them to the Forest McDonald's. What are they gonna do, a DNA Engaging test? EngagingCapModule.exe Ah, I see. We are negotiating in bad faith. I will download a more suitable personality for this transaction. One moment, please. No backseas, dog fucker! It's called business, not friends! We're like masters of survival! Oh my god, I forgot how much I love the writing in this game. That's more like it! Now let's go eat this McRib! You abscond with your bun full of meat-like substance and find a quiet clearing in the woods. The three of you split the McRib, not that Calculester needs it, but he loves to feel included, and you gain plus two smarts and plus one fun. Yay! Home is where your booty sits the comfiest. Ooh, okay, so instead of going around the cafeteria, we go, it's around the campfire. Okay, so we've got Damon and the Witch on this log. We've got a moth on this log. Okay, well, we're gonna sit with Damon, obviously. You're warming yourself by the fire, but being careful not to catch on fire this time. Long story, don't worry. <laughs> we remember, we remember, don't worry. When suddenly- <laughs> Joy, 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 you have to share! Enough of this. No, I don't. If you want a magical artifact of your own, then dedicate your life to saving the world. Train in magic and go on adventures to get one. 
You can't do none of that when you just, and then just demand that you get a turn with the increasingly rare voodoo doll, but sexy. Uh -huh. But what if I really want it? Uh -huh. Then you should have thought of that before ignoring all of my requests for help, if not actively sabotaging my coven missions. But I did all of that before I knew there was going to be a voodoo doll but sexy involved. Now, I want to help save the world. Okay, next mission, you can come along, and if there's an artifact we get, then you can have a turn with that. Fight me, dude! What? No, let me have it now! I have a medical condition where if I don't get what I want, I beat people up. Oof, you better step in before this gets ugly, er, than it already is. Okay, so we have to help... We have to help Damien with his medical condition. <laughs> okay. Um, but Joy, the goddess that is Damien's turn with the artifact. <laughs> Damien, nothing is more magical than respecting your friend's boundaries, so, so shut the fuck up. I would never say that. I would never say that, Damien. This cannot be for real. A likely story. The goddess would never be that irresponsible. <laughs> Nuh-uh, she totally said I could have it. Why don't you ask her? Metrios Zenthos! Okay, maybe I will. I just open a portal to the goddess and ask her right now. True to her word, Joy does, in fact, open a portal Come to the on, goddess. Take a break. Ugh, <laughs> uh, another day, another bath interrupted. What can I do for you, Joy? Goddess, I worked hard to get this artifact all on my own, and now Karen and Damien are saying I need to give him a turn, even though it's mine. Ugh. But Joy's had it a whole time, and she hasn't even let me touch it. Because it's not yours. Ugh, everything's chill. Okay, okay. Let's settle down. Damien, you need to be respectful of Joy and listen to her words. Ha! You need to learn to share. But Joy, I think Damien should have a turn with the artifact. Because even though that sounds horribly dangerous and could end the world, you need to learn to share. Double ha! Mm, don't be selfish, Joy. If the two of you can't learn to get along and share, I'm going to have to take that voodoo doll but sexy away from both of you and put it back in the labyrinth of despair. <gasps> no, no, no. I can share. I promise. Oh, thanks, honey. Okay, good. Play nice, both of you. The portal closes and Joy reluctantly turns to Damien with a world-weary sigh. Ugh, fine. Take the voodoo doll but sexy. It's your turn with it. Then give it right back and be careful. <laughs> Whoops. All of its limbs are supposed to come off like that? I should have known you fucked this up. Well, now what are we going to do? Want to just play video games on my Switch? Sure. <laughs> Using the valuable lesson the goddess taught you, the three of you take turns sharing the Switch. It's actually pretty fun. Yay. Damien loves us. A new day, a new adventure. Okay. Um... Let's let's see, we try Camp Dome, we try Woods. Let's go to the lake. Before you go to the lake, you decide you must make the most in fun inflatable toy to float that you possibly can. You combine many of your favorite fun things. Ice cream, tabletop games, watching your enemies fail, ducks. The resulting amalgamation is certainly interesting, even if it doesn't exactly float on water. You decide to name your toy Dr. Frankenfun. Or maybe you name it Dr. Frankenfun's monster. Just beholding the horror you've created gives you plus two fun. You and Damien are lounging together, having a surprisingly chill time reading comic books. <gasps> this is going to sound crazy, but can you pass me one that doesn't have someone put their fists through someone else on the cover? What's up, loser? Oh, this is a two other characters. Okay, okay. Wait, what's this now? You're gonna read actual words that might describe something other than punching? <laughs> huh? What? No. Who said that? I was just asking for the one without someone punching so that I could eat it, obviously. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. What did I say, Delilah? I told you he's getting soft. <gasps> but not so soft that you won't still come and stand strangle the ocean kicking with us tonight. Oh, sand strangling and ocean kicking. Okay. My biceps are ready to choke that sand right out, and I got special boots made with spikes on the bottom and the sides and the top, so I can really show those waves who's boss. Mm. Uh, well, that does sound great, uh. but... But? Speaking of the ocean, I was actually going to watch this documentary on dolphins tonight. I'm making popcorn and baking dolphin-shaped cookies Ugh. if you want to join. Wow! You changed, Damien. It's no wonder the wildfire hasn't appeared to you yet. What? What do you mean? 
I know you've been on the hunt for an elusive wildfire, and I know it's thus far eluded you. And I also know you why. You are unworthy. The wildfire only appears to those who are badass enough to be worthy of its unbridled glory and untamed no majesty. No one is ready for Dahlia. It's true. I was just in the woods one day, playing with matches, and suddenly out of nowhere, the wildfire just appeared. It was one of the most magical moments of my life. There's nothing like seeing a wildfire out in its natural habitat. <laughs> that was bad you never see it. Face it, Damien. You're just not yeah! metal anymore. Not metal. Not metal. I'll show you who's not metal, or I'll show them who is metal. It's me. I'm still metal. Now, to prove it, by becoming the worthy of the wildfire. But how? Okay, we're gonna perform the sickest skateboard trick, escaping from a tank of water while chained and on a skateboard. Okay, write a poem, but a poem that's very metal. Um, I mean, I think we have to do the skateboard trick, right? Like, we have to. Fucking metal! Okay. Oh, hell yeah. That's all kinds of metal. The chains are gonna be metal. The top of the water tank will be metal. I guess the wheel of the skateboard. Are those metal? <sighs> Who cares? Point is, lots of metal, and I'll be the metalist of all. In fact, let's find even more metal. I'm gonna have a tuning fork in each hand when you chain me. No, wait, a tuning fork in one hand and a regular fork in the other hand. I think there's a metal suit of armor in the haunted manor. I could wear that too. You managed to convince Damien not to put on a heavy suit of armor before you lock him into a tank full of water, which is good because you can't smooch him if he drowns. I mean, I guess you could, but you're not really into that, so it's better if he survives. You find a water tank, put a skateboard at the bottom chain, Damien up, and then throw him in so that he sinks into the skateboard. But because he is, as he claims, super metal, it doesn't take Damien long at all to break out of the water tank with a sick ass flip. He skateboards down the middle of the water tank doing a one-armed handstand on the board. He does a double somersault in the air, hitting the tuning fork with a regular fork to create a beautiful and magical pitch as he lands right side up on That's the skateboard. That's Damien style, baby! Fuck yeah! Wildfire, come at me, bro! <laughs> Silly Damien, you can't call the wildfire. It appears to you when you're worthy, which you're not. Yes, I am! I just did the sickest, most metal skateboard trick ever! Uh, I mean, I didn't see it. Hmm. If a demon does a sick-ass kickflip in the woods, but nobody's there to see it, was it still metal as fuck? Obviously, yes. Yeah. Obviously not, or the wildfire would have appeared. Karen saw it. Ask her. <laughs> oh, Damien, we all know Karen is a thirsty bitch who would say anything to get attention <laughs> from you. Delilah's right. You are a thirsty bitch, Karen. <laughs> um, but you're a thirsty bitch who helped me out today, and I appreciate it. We're like masters of Let's try of again survival. sometime. I know next time we can get that wildfire to show itself for real. Uh, you're not sure that the ma mystical wildfire actually works, um, but hey, if Damien wants to hang with you more, you're not gonna stop him. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. Okay, yay. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if I'm cool with him calling me so thirsty like that. Wherever I go, hi Jinx and Sue. Okay. All right. Um, so we went to the lake. Okay, let's go. Um, where have we not gone yet? We haven't gone to the manor or scout HQ. Let's go to the manor. Haunted manor. A voice whispers from the walls in a frightening voice. Karen, you can't escape your fate. You'll soon gain boldness. But after that, something weird will happen to you. It could be great or terrible. You don't want something potentially terrible happening to you. You stay put and be, to be sure. Um, you don't get extra boldness per the voice's prediction. Look at you, trying to defy destiny itself. That takes some brawn bravery. Here, have plus two boldness. <sighs> oh god. You're resorting your collection of Pokemon cards thinking wistfully of the Terry the Taxman you once traded for an Arctic colonialist Ernest skeleton when you're interrupted. <gasps> there you are, Karen. I've been looking everywhere for you. Those words warm your heart more than any fire ever could. Even more, the wildfire for which Damien is presumably searching desperately once more. I'm searching desperately for the wildfire once more. And there it is. Since you were such a big help last time, I thought you might want to try again. I mean, you weren't such a big help as to actually bring the wildfire, <laughs> but I did appreciate your support and enthusiasm. And mostly, if I do find the wildfire, I'm going to need a witness to prove hmm. it. I realize our approach last time was all wrong. Yes, we pulled off something radical and metal, as only I could. And with you watching, I guess, but fire 
but is fire most known for being radical and metal? <laughs> yes, of course it is. But it's also known for being dangerous and reckless, obeying no laws and fearing nothing. The wildfire will not appear simply to those who are radical and metal, or it totally would have already come Rad! I need to do something truly, unmistakably dangerous and reckless to lure that sneaky wildfire out. Any thoughts? He was so tempted to tell Damien that the appearance of wildfire is based on weather and foliage, not worthiness. And, um, Ar- Aravi? Aravi was just fucking with him. But doing that would be against your own interests, since it would cut short the valuable bonding time. So you make up some reckless, dangerous, stupid bullshit, because apparently putting your crush in danger is worth it for you, as long as you can do shenanigans with him. You should really do some introspection about this later, vis-a-vis your priorities and ethics. But for now, you pitch Damien the best idea you've got. Okay. All right, so we can either enroll in an expensive university and declare a useless major that has no job security. So reckless. Or someone truly reckless could travel at 150 miles per hour in a Ferrari being driven by a cat. Cats don't give a fuck. Okay, um... Do we want to do school or cats? Okay. <clears throat> I think we do the school one. I'm just trying to guess based on our stats. That's just my work! Okay, yes. Ha! Yeah, I love that. There's plenty of universities across Monsteropolis that offer free higher education since they value knowledge and fostering the youth. But let's go to one of those backwards-ass areas that charge exorbitant amounts for a piece of paper that'll never allow you to make enough money to pay back the amount you paid for that piece of paper. <laughs> oh man, saying that out loud, I can't believe we're doing this. It's so fucking crazy. Wow, I can't think of anything more reckless than this. <sighs> Like, what if I paid $60,000 a year to study the dying art form of musical theater and then still had the audition for roles, most of which I couldn't get? No, wait, that's too crazy. There's being reckless, and then there's being blatantly self-defeating. Creative writing is the same vibes. Philosophy's way too ba- vague and too boring. Don't even get me started on game development. Wow. Fucking oh, metal. I'll go to school with independent studies and create a major, professional poker player. That way, there's always risk, but also opportunity for reward. Damien turns on his phone and submits several applications online, costing him upwards of $500 in total, because you also have to spend money to ask to spend money so you can have the chance to earn money to pay back the money you spent in order to earn money. Wow. He then pulls out a deck of cards and starts practicing his poker. Uh. Unfortunately, oh, these two again. These two again. I'm gonna have to get more water before it's even part two. I should have grabbed a LaCroix. I should have grabbed a LaCroix. I didn't. Oh my God, that's totally, what totally not badass, disgustingly chill activity are you doing now? (sighs) What are you talking about? First of all, I'm recklessly wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on a useless education. And also, of all, Poker is super irresponsible and super cool. You wear leather jackets and sunglasses and say all in and <laughs> it's so cute that you're playing with your little cards. Oh yeah. Last time I saw Aravi play with a card, it was made of metal and she threw it into a guy's throat. Oh. It's true. I was there. It also knocked over a candelabra in the corridor and then a wildfire appeared to Aravati. Nope. Jane, hello. Jane, Jane, look, we're dating Damien. We're dating Damien this time. How are you? Are you having a good day? Just stopping in briefly to say, oh, what do you, what, to say what, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't think a wildfire will ever appear to you for doing something as safe as poker. Oh, so say hi. Hi. Hi, I love you. (laughs) I saw you got on blue sky. How, what do you think? What do you think of it? Safe? Safe? I already gambled my parents' lava slide beach house in the first circle of hell and lost it. Uh. Okay, well that's just too irresponsible. The wildfire won't appear to you just for being a jerk to your parents. Hey, kids! Hey, kids, it's me, Tubular Eddie, the anti-gambling arbark! Oh my god, he has a guitar hero guitar. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. I have one somewhere. I don't know where it is, but we have one somewhere. It's probably in the closet. Delilah's right. Gambling is irresponsible and totally lame. Cool kids do uh, safe investments. 
I need to leave now to go to my radical concert for cool kids and other financially you can responsible bet all people. your money that gambling is no good. But remember, the winning bet is to go all in and not gambling. Oh my god, the, they actually did really increase the little voice bits. Like, it's not full voice acting, but it's like, there's like the little bits in there so much more. Yeah, what that weird aardvark said. I agree, Damien is indeed Listen Damien. up, noobs! Oh, this is totally badass, and Karen and I both know it. it was badass, and we're going to lure that wildfire out and prove how badass I am. Just watch us. Right, Karen? You up for more shenanigans together? Us? We? Shenanigans. It seems like Damien is starting to think of you two as a team. Sick. Plus two boldness and plus one fun is all yours, baby. <laughs> Oh, I got an achievement for seeing that gambling anyone? event. Jane, what are you doing today? Anything fun? Okay, ooh, it's nighttime again. Okay, he's sitting with... Oh, the influencer person that I'm so curious about. Okay, yes, yes, yes. You noticed something strange. Damien isn't fucking with the campfire at all, and Milo is looking at a phone other than their own. You've got to get a closer look. Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. I'm putting my heart and soul into this YouTube thing, and I'm not getting very any responses. Is it something wrong with my videos? Are they no good? Damien, please stop. <laughs> please stop. I'm in pain. <laughs> please stop. I'm, I'm hurting. <laughs> this hurts. Don't say such things. <laughs> don't say such things. Okay. That's so fetch. No, of course not, darling. Your content is fantastic, especially this one here. Cut crease with the blood of your enemies. Prom makeup tutorial. So fetch. <laughs> Is your, it's your dementor that, demeanor, oh. It's your demeanor that's the problem. You need a complete personality rebranding and completely overhauling other people's personalities. It's what I do best. For example, perhaps instead of opening your videos with what's up noobs, let's fuck up some foundation. You could say, let's put on, some, let's put some of that inner beauty on the outside. <laughs> that sounds really stupid. But you really should be scripting your videos to be more watchable. <sighs> Oh, why not give your followers a cute little name? That way they can identify with you and bring more individuals to watch your channel, like a hive mind. Hmm. Maybe you could call them the Damiacs or La Very Obsessed with Makeups. What the fuck? <laughs> um, just make sure it's short enough to be used as a hashtag. That's what really gets the ball rolling. Listen up, noobs! What about fuckles? That's what I've been calling my viewers all this time this anyway. This is an opportunity to grow. Mmm, that doesn't sound very advertiser-friendly. <sighs> Who gives a shit? Look, Milo, I know you're trying to help, but all these ideas are super uncool and not metal mm. at all. Hey, I'm helping you get subscribers, not act like a little reb punk. People don't like metal. They like being reassured that their insignificant existences have value. You guys all have value. I love you so much. Am I doing it? Is this, is this, is this what you do? Is this what you do? Don't forget to like and subscribe. <gasps> It's true. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're watching the stream on YouTube, click like, please. Like the YouTube stream and come hang out with me on Twitch for a better chat experience. It's vital to mortals to find communities and feel important before they die. That's what influencers are for. Great. Thanks, Milo. That's got, that got fucking dark. Maybe now it's time for you to offer one of your patented unsolicited ideas on how to boost Damien's channel. Oh, God. Oh god. You should take inspiration for your brand from a more successful brand like Milo's. Just try to be more like Milo. In the end, you can't spell Damien without Milo. That's not true. I can't spell in that, but that's not true. You want a brand that spells metal? Forget that online branding and just go back to offline branding with a branding iron. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, maybe, Damien, maybe content creation is not for you. Maybe, maybe... Maybe you're just like an angry kind of person and it's just not for you. That's crazy enough to work! But he liked it. Fuck yeah, I love it! Mm -hmm. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> so, who needs sense when you have a branding iron? But that won't do anything for your YouTube channel at all. It's not as if you can physically brand subscribers who only connect with you. What a digital. noob! Hey, check it out! eBay's full of branding irons! Looks like some slaughter house just went out of business fucking noobs your loss is my game and last i checked people don't particularly like being branded on their naked flesh huh? i don't know some people do holy shit this one brands in the shape of a skull and crossbones right this one 
Oh my god. Wait, here's one that just says, fuck you. Damien, are you even listening to me? What? No, fuck off. I didn't even know you were still here. Uh, you clearly aren't taking my advice seriously at all. You're right. I'm not. How tasteless. Fine, I'm leaving. Bye. Cool, bye. But if your channel goes downhill because it turns out people aren't into being branded, don't come crying to me. That's Damien style, baby. Ha, I just brought a branding iron off eBay. I'm never going to have a reason to cry again. Milo leaves in a huff. Damien immediately turns to you and starts discussing logo designs for his new branding iron. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know what, Milo? Maybe you just don't understand the niche Damien is going for. Maybe, like, he just wants a really small group of very loyal followers. Maybe that's what he wants. You don't know. You don't know. It's a very fun bonding experience, and hey, maybe when his order ships, you'll get to be the first person Damien brands on his own. Bless. Bless. Okay. Ooh. Oh, this is different. What is this? Um... Let's take a gamble. Let's be crazy. Ah, welcome, welcome. You're new here? Don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I will prepare you a drink. The drink of the day. You may choose to drink that one. But if you're not interested, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with a second option. It could be better. It could be worse. But one thing is for sure, it will be mysterious. And these drinks, look, choose whatever you want. But I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in training. For you to test my concoctions is somewhere between kind and reckless. So, get ready and good luck. Pina Scalata. It's thunderstormy here. Perfect weather for a fun spooky game. Hell yeah, Koneko. Koneko, we're, we're getting ready. We're going we're gonna to go to the meteor shower with Damien, the, the demon boy. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's who we're for our first uh, playthrough. Okay. So, Pina Scalata. Or the mystery one. Well, what do you say? Will you take the drink? Oh. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer that mystery box? Um, I think I would like a pina colada. Because I like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. Like the thunderstorm Koneko is having. having. Have a good lurk, by the way, Koneko. Let's take the pina colada. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your prize is the drink you chose. Okay. The Pina Scalata is a concoction that will shake the inside of your own skull. Choose two stats and see how the kick of this beauty makes those stats swap. Oh. Okay. So, hmm... I think I would like to stop being smart and be more creative. So we're gonna do smarts. And this is, right, creativity? Yes. Now time. <laughs> yes. I'm a dumb bitch now. Just like I always wanted. Okay. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Thanks, kitty cat. Thanks, kitty cat, I'm a dumb bitch now. Yeah. Okay. It will be a camp-tastic day. All right, so that was the manor, right? That was like a long one, I think. Okay, let's go to the scout HQ. That day, all the scouts make a braid chain as a team-building exercise. You learn all sorts of new ways to braid hair. But the person braiding your hair accidentally ties an infinity knot into your head. There's no way to untie it. You can see into infinity. But right before Coach gives you the worst haircut of your life, you see how all of your friends will die. It's useful in helping you eliminate David Davidson, the doomed deer person from your romantic prospects. Wow. <laughs> Intense. You also watch every Marvel movie that will ever be released. You gain plus two creativity from witnessing so many plot twists. Oh my god. <laughs> Please stop making Marvel movies. We don't need any more. We have hit maximum. We need, we need a break. Uh, the counselors had the poor judgment to leave you alone with Damien, Milo, Arvati, Hex, and a whole bunch of macaroni. Oh god. Milo's using the macaroni for its intended purpose, painting a selfie, while Hex is eating it raw. Damien is trying to kill it, and Arvati is looking up its stats online. Is it Aravi? 
I can't say this name for some reason. Arabi. <laughs> what? Ooh. Why? What? What? Why? Ob what? I'm so confused. He's a chameleon man wearing a lion head? Okay. Macaroni, that won't help you at all in a bear attack. What the fuck? Hey, Kate, it's me, Coach. How did I guess that voice so good? That's right, campers. It is I, your delightful and overbearing Tiger Coach, here to teach you yet another lesson about bear avoidance. Oh, he's pretending to be Tiger Coach from the first game. Remember, there's no bee in bear, except when there is. Then it's the kind of thing I coach say all mm -hmm. the time. All right, Coach, let's get this over with. What's today's You bear just lesson? got flodged! <laughs> ha, I fooled you. It's me, Counselor Flodge, the whole time. <laughs> Whoa, really? Even when you said, it is I, your delightful and overbearing tiger coach? <laughs> Especially then. And I'm never more myself when I'm in disguise. Unbelievable! Your camouflage skills are out of this world, Counselor Flodge. I have so much to learn from you about the subtle arts. <laughs> when it comes to subtlety, Aravi, you have a lot to learn from a basket of hand grenades. <sighs> oh, it's the other... Oh, I understand her now. Okay, she has two, two things. It's her and the skull thing. They're different. I, I just thought they were the same, but she's got two. Okay. All right. Basket of hand grenades. Where? I'm going to gift and going to a gift exchange later, and I want to bring something that represents Camo personality. Flodge. You kids are getting a little far off the point, probably because I camouflaged it so mm. effectively. And what exactly is the point then? Mm. The point is that everything Coach has told you about bears is a load of horse wheat. You shouldn't be afraid of bears. You should be learning from them. And I'm sure you know, bears are the only animals more skilled than chameleons at the art of camouflage. Stealth mode! One of you could be a bear right now, and the rest of you wouldn't even know. In fact, one of you is. <laughs> That's right! I secretly replaced one of you with a bear, while no one was looking to teach you the valuable lesson about art of disguise. I so... I don't have time for this ridiculous charade. I'm supposed to be serving looks at the soup kitchen right now. Poor people deserve spiritual nourishment, too. Why is Milo Jeffrey star? Why? When was this game made? Wait, what was the release date? Monster Camp release date. It was released in October 2020. I feel like that was when everybody was super on the Jeffree Star hate train. Okay, anyways, I had to find that out. Mm. It's mm. Milo. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Milo's mm -hmm. definitely a bear. Obviously, who else showed up here at camp during the summer, despite never having been around Spooky High? Well, you... Versus... No one, and I haven't anyone who disagrees with me. Oh geez, this is getting kind of heated. You're pretty sure Miller's not a bear. They're way too hairless, but what can you say that'll prove that to the others? No, look, Milo's verified on Instagram. That process was specifically designed to ensure that your favorite e-celebs aren't secret bears. It's true, that's exactly what that's for. So what if they're a bear? You all monsters, right? Shouldn't we accept Milo for who they are regardless of species? Ooh, I like that one. I like that one. Um, we're gonna go with that one. You step between Milo and the others to deliver a heartfelt speech about the importance of loving all of Earth's creatures, no matter how wily or murderous. Mm -hmm. Wow, that speech really touched my heart, and not in the fatal outside the chest way I'm used to touching hearts. You did it, like, emotionally. Am I saying that right? Oh, gods, you've killed so many monsters just for being monsters. This is making me question my entire moral foundation. I need more therapy! Are you gonna eat that? Are you gonna eat those feelings, Ravi? I could eat them for you, just saying. <laughs> Karen, I'm both moved and impressed by your speech. I, too, believe that it is important to judge someone on whether or not they're a bear, but on the content of Hello, their character. Hello, it's not me! In fact, you may be surprised to know that I'm not really Counselor Flodge, your lovable disguise instructor. Unbelievable. I'm actually... Unbelievable! A bear! <laughs> Counselor Flodge was the most bear- was the secret bear this whole time! Whoa, you're a pro! <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Karen. Your inclusive rhetoric lured this bear out of hiding, and now we can stab him with these pointed sticks I made. <laughs> Damien and Aravi chased the poor bewildered bear into the woods with their sticks. Afterwards, you all head back to camp for Sloppy Joes. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I'm not normally one for self-reflection, but was it wrong of us to take advantage of Karen's heartfelt speech to flush out and hunt a bear? <sighs> No way, Milo. Bears will do anything to get the upper hand, and no tool is off limits in the war against them. 
I had a friend, a notorious bear hunter named Darius Weapon, who got so tired of the constant psychological strain that he decided to quit the business. He actually got a job as a financial analyst. Can you imagine going from a life of adventure to a white collar desk job? But that's where his head was at. He even started up a romance with a claims adjuster at the same company, had to file paperwork and everything to make sure their relationship was workplace appropriate. They got married, had a couple of kids, and they're living together to this day in a beautiful little cabin he built himself. All monsters or must die. They would be if his beautiful wife hadn't turned out to be a secret bear who ate him and their children after 13 years of marriage. That's right. That bear embedded itself in a Wall Street insurance company in the claims department just in case an ex-bear hunter ever retired and decided to <laughs> work there. Wow, I guess I've got a lot to learn about being a vengeful piece of shit. Did anyone see where that bear when went? When life closes one door, another opens. I think that bear... I think the bear you should really be searching for, Damien, is the one inside your heart. Nobody knows what that means, but they're all really pleased with you for catching that crafty bear. You gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Fuck yeah. We're doing good, y'all. We're doing good. We're halfway. Let's go. We're halfway to kissing Damien. Okay. Um, so we visited all the places at least once. Um, let's see. We've got our stats, I think, are fine. I don't I don't really know. Um But anyways, we're just we're gonna go back to the camera. That day you play competitive spin the bottle. You must kiss a camper from the camp from camp rival camp. Oh my god. It's a long intense kiss in which your tongues wrestle mercilessly. You apply some unexpected biting. That's the current very high on that's currently very Why was that line hard? Anyway, let's try it again. You apply some unexpected biting, since that's currently very high on the meta, while holding the back of their head to prevent an untimely escape. You win at kissing. It goes without saying that you're in plus two charm. Hell yeah. Kissing is definitely something you can win at, and I did. You link up with Damien afterwards. He told you Coach wanted him to dig a latrine, and he could hey. use a hand. There you are, Karen. Thanks for showing up, but I think I figured it out. <laughs> I didn't know what a latrine was, but it sounds French, so I made an educated guess and buried landmines everywhere. You look at him perplexed. The French didn't invent landmines, you tell him. What? They didn't? What the fuck is the point of the French? Get then? off my property! Hey, stop burying those landmines on my property. You're dangerously close to exceeding the state of California's recommended landmine maximum, and I don't need that paperwork. Fight me, dude! Your land? What the fuck are you talking about? I've carved my name in every building here, and most of the campers. Hmm. Sorry, kid. You're not actually... I'm not actually sorry. I'm evil. It's just an expression. But Camp Spooky is mine now. Here's the deed. Huh? What? No, you can't buy Camp Spooky. This is the home of the most treasured memories. And also, my landmines. Oh, this will be a shopping Land mall. Landmines. Your memories and explosives have to find another home, Sonny. This is shopping mall country now. Nah. Ah! Oh, that, that, that blows utter balls. Shopping malls are useless. Why build one here? On the contrary, shopping malls still have a very important use, making summer campers like you absolutely Let's miserable. go, intern. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to spill some oil in the Pacific Ocean and blame it on sea otters. I'll be back with the bulldozers this afternoon. Toodles. <laughs> Fuck this. We can't let that colossal wiener bulldoze our beloved camp. I was planning to bulldoze our beloved camp. <sighs> There's only one way to fix this that I will accept. Crimes. Come on, Karen. Help me think of an act of vandalism so heinous it'll scare that dweeb away for good. Okay. Um, bring in the one thing guaranteed to destroy the value of any, any, any property, shitty neighbors. Wow. So salt in the soil, so no shopping malls will ever grow here again. Let's, let's find some shitty neighbors, y'all. Let's find some shitty neighbors. Oh! It said not so fun. I guess my fun stat wasn't good enough to pick that. Okay. You're damn right. Shitty neighbors can turn the best property into a carnival of shit. Like my fucking neighbor Randall. He smells like burning hair and has a fishing hat that I covet. God, he makes me so fucking sick. But where were we? Where will we find appropriately shitty neighbors? It's not like it's not like Randall's moving anytime soon. Damn him. But what we need are some skilled bad neighbor impersonators, caper experts, you know. Or what's another way to say that? Oh yeah, we Freak need some. <gasps> my love. Is Polly praying messers with a Z? I was gonna say say escapade specialist, but that's even <laughs> better. You know, I really admire you prank masters. I mean, pranks are basically crimes, but everyone laughs instead of trying to nice. arrest you. Only if you're not pranking hard enough. Come on, let's get pranking. Oh 
Oh my god, I missed her. You give Polly and Scott some time to prepare while you and Damien hide in a bush and wait for the CEO's evil return. I'm back, and boy, am I evil. Now where did I put that wrecking ball? Oh, hello, neighbor. <laughs> What's up, neighbor? Mm -hmm. Are you building a shopping mall here? God, I just love shopping malls. They get me Meh. so hot. <laughs> really? That's excellent. I'll get this building done really quickly. Uh, I mean, not too quickly. Slowly and uh, essentially. <laughs> Wait, I know. I'll call you all teenagers quite often, but you're actually teenagers or just horny young adults going to summer camp for some reason. I don't remember. Uh, the second thing, I think. Wait, when's my birthday again? <laughs> Good enough for me. I'll be back with that mall. I have to change Blame. pants. <sighs> what the fuck, you guys? Now he's more horny for shopping malls than he was before. What the hell happened? <sighs> I'll tell you what happened, Damien. You guys Correct. just got double pranked. We lied to you. Lying is a prank. You're not fit for survival. Fuck me. I guess that's what I get for dealing with the prank masters and for listening to Karen. She's worse than Randall. Pretty sure that's not a compliment, dog. The CEO can't buy the camp because of the prank masters also pranked him by replacing his deed with salami, but you still lose minus two charm and minus one boldness. Well, fuck, we failed. That was our, our first failed little event. Okay. Night prank. anyone? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, he's sitting with Calculester today. Like, this moth keeps being here. Anyway. Ah, uh, a nice, cozy, snuggly, very chill, and non-violent night by the campfire. <gasps> pew, 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 bang, bang. Mm. Yes, friend Damien. I am familiar with the automatopoeic representations of gunshots. I realize you are attempting to help. My question is if they truly have a place in our chart of the circle of life, and if guns are a part of nature, as you insist. <laughs> Calculester, come on. Would I lie to you? As much as it pains me to say it, friend Damien, an internal search of all of your past behavior indicates that yes, you probably would. But what about this photograph of this giant angry blue turtle equipped with guns as part of its physical <gasps> form? <gasps> hmm. Much like we use airplanes because we don't have the natural wings of birds, or scuba equipment because we don't have the natural gills of fish, we use guns to replicate the natural guns of gunned animals. Hmm. You make a compelling argument, and yet something still feels amiss. Oh, oh, you know what it is. Okay. That's because the photograph is clearly crayon drawing that Damien did. He even signed it. Oh my god. Every animal would be using guns if they had opposable thumbs. Using them is not against nature, but rather a display of evolutionary advantage, the naturiest thing there is. You need to learn from the pros. How did I know he would love that? How did I know? How did I know? That's right. We're lucky we monsters evolved opposable thumbs first to keep those mons- mother- That's not the word. I almost said a different word. Those motherfuckers in check. Our animals would be killing us left and right. But as most animals do not have opposable thumbs, there is truly no way to test this hypothesis. Of course there is, Cal. It's called using your imagination. I am physically incapable of imagining anything. It is one of my many shortcomings as a tragic facsimile of free-thinking being. Then allow me. Think of it this way. Animals will use any weapon they're capable of grasping to do the most damage possible. That's Damien style, baby. And this is a hypothesis that I can prove and will prove right now. Calculester gasps as Damien dumps out a bucket containing a crab he must have caught at the lake earlier that day and then hands the crab a knife. The crab grasps the knife in his grabby little claws and starts stabbing Damien repeatedly in the ankles. He scuttles back, still stabbing the air menacingly. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> look at that adorable motherfucker and his stabby stabby knife. He looks so cute and silly. I don't even care that I'm bleeding. <gasps> Friend, Damien, your hypothesis was correct. That crab attacked you. Yeah, obviously. We're all here. But now, but now check this out. Damien pulls out a gun because of course he has a gun and tries to hand it to the crab who latches onto the barrel and holds it tight. See, he's going for it hardcore, but look what happens next. You all watch as the crab scuttles over to the camp gun shop to apply for his firearms license. <gasps> wow, what a good crab. Because of his dumb little crab claws, he can't sign his name on the form and therefore can't wield a gun. But see how badly he wants to? The crab throws the gun to the ground and jumps up and down on all of his many legs, the spider of the sea grumpy at being oh foiled. Dear. Oh gosh, oh yes, no. Yes, Damien, I surely did. And having witnessed it with my own eyes, I can now agree that any animal would be dangerous with a gun. However, I am unsure this proves we should have them. <sighs> nope, you already agree with me. No takey backsies. Well, 
you do know more about the circle of life and nature, and you have invoked the rule of no takey backsies, which I would never betray. I suppose you win. Fucking metal! Fuck yeah, guns forever! No addendums or qualifications to that statement. Look, it's not like it's an unproblematic viewpoint, but it's less problematic than Damien not falling for you, which he clearly is. Pew pew pew, bang bang, emphasis on bang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Today All right. will be a camptastic day. Hell yeah. Alright, let's um let's see, let's go to the lake. Let's go to the lake. You decide to go relax at the lake for a bit. Camp spooky gets pretty crazy, so it's nice to just float on the water and chill. You end up falling asleep and wake up to realize you floated halfway across the rake lake straight into a crab rave the crabs are just as confused as you are but they invite you to a rave with them and their party is surprisingly popping you gain plus one invite to the next crab rave and plus two fun hell yeah you find damien standing on the pier throwing matches into the water and saying some pretty creative swears soggy eel tits i came to this camp to kick ass and start fires but how am i supposed to start any fires when there's all this bullshit water here for people to throw on them i mean that's what i was thinking but then i had an idea I'm gonna set the lake on fire. That'll teach it to sit here being all wet and non-combustible. Fight me, dude! That's right, you fucking lake. I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you because I intend to set you on fire. Oh, what? Why are you staring at me like that, you body of fucking water? Mm -hmm. You think just because all your hydrogen already expanded its vol vol volatile energy by reacting with oxygen, you're not flammable? Well, well, you're right. You see what I'm up against here, Karen. But I can't give up hope. After all, Rome wasn't burned in a day. It took a lot of barbarians a long time to do it. And yeah, all, all I really need is a little help. I know this is a pretty intimate request, but uh, would you help me set this lake on fire? You thought he'd never ask, and luckily you've got the perfect plan. Okay, we're going to kill 300 Vikings so you can have 300 Viking funerals at once. Wow. Humiliate the lake with the sickest burn of all time. Um... Uh... <laughs> I don't know which one to pick. Uh, I think maybe I think this one. There we go. Okay, we did it. You step up to the lake and hit it with the sickest series of burns you can think of. Wait, Damien, where's the lake you wanted to set on fire again? All I see is this massive toilet full of used needles. No, no, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's great to meet a celebrity. I never thought I'd get to meet the slime from Nickelodeon's Kid Choice Awards in person. Wow. Seriously, your water's filthier than dubstep baseline. These are some sick burns, y'all. Sick burns. Your pH is more unbalanced than Fox News. Final analysis. You're more toxic than Logan Paul's fan base. It pain, it, it pain, it pain, pain to say these. It just... Wow. Whoa. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, damn. Wait, is the lake actually polluted, though? You've done your research, and yes, it actually is. Honestly, there shouldn't be a summer camp here. <laughs> well, that makes things super easy. Damien whips out a blowtorch, which of course he carries with him at all times, and torches the thin layer of pollution on the surface of the lake. It immediately bursts into bright green flame, which burns for hours. The fire actually does a lot to purify the lake while simultaneously warming your hearts. You gain plus two charm and plus one fun. Yay! Burn, baby, burn. A new day, a new adventure. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's go, let's go back, let's go into the woods. Maybe we can have some McDonald's, some more Mc, McRib in the woods. Let's see. Okay, while you were hiking through the woods, you accidentally step on a pile of leaves covering a massive hole. It was a trap, an evil goblin hunter. Um, is it a goblin who hunts or someone who hunts goblins? You'll never know, appears. They were the one who put the trap there. This is it. You're done. You get ready to embrace death, but the goblin hunter only set the trap to get someone to help them to do their math homework. They'll only let you leave if you help them. You don't have any other option here. It's a bit boring, but you actually learn some useful calculus in game plus two smarts. Wow. Wow. Um, you hear the unmistakable sound of Damien yelling obscenities. You can't help but go see Fight me, dude! For the last time, you fucking animals. I'm not cheating. I'm just good at poker. The fucking animals Damien is addressing are three actual wolves he seems to have put playing cards in front of. They're all growling at Damien. <laughs> oh good, Karen, you're here. Maybe you can help explain these wolves that I'm not a <laughs> cheater. Coach said, wolves are like the mafia of the forest, so naturally, I went and found some to play poker with, but they're total scrubs, and I've been taking all their money all day. 
Damien gestures at the miscellaneous pile of poker chips, animal bones, and bits of meat by his feet. The growling intensifies. Like, come on, you can't refuse to play every hand just standing there salivating and baring your teeth and expect to win at poker. That's why I've been cleaning up. <laughs> And now they're all mad about how unfair it is. Come on, I've been trying to talk sense into them by screaming in their faces and calling them poor sports, but it's not working. You're pretty sure the wolves are mad because they're wolves that Damien has been throwing playing cards at for about an hour. You tell him he should probably stop. Oh, see what's going on here? You're in league with the wolves. They're trying to pull me out of the game right when I'm on a hot streak. Ugh, you make me well, miss fuck school. Off. I don't want to. Like the old saying says, you've got to know when to hold them and when to fucking dunk on some wolves. <laughs> the wolves are inching closer. If you don't figure out a way to get Damien out of here, they're about to go all in on his jugular. Think fast. Okay. Teach Damien to read the wolves' tells. Hopefully then he'll realize they're about to maul his face. Wolves are morally opposed to gambling, so just letting them choose something else to play so Damien can beat them at their own game. <laughs> yes, this one. Okay. Oh, dang. I didn't know I was insulting wolf culture by coming out here and forcing these wolves to play poker with me at knife point. Oh, God, he was doing it at knife point. Oh, God, Damien. Oh, God. Damien hurriedly gathers all the playing cards together and also stops pointing so many knives at hmm. the wolves. Here you go, guys. Here's the deck. What do you want to play? Honestly, you are sort of expecting the wolves to get confused and wander away, but you're su but to your surprise, the middle wolf picks up some of the cards and starts handing them Rad. out. Hey, I know this game, but I had no idea wolves were into werewolf. Indeed, it is a well-known fact that the board game community that all of the forest animals, wolves, are the most serious about social deduction games. Each of you gets your secret roll card designating some of you as villagers and some of you as wolves. Hmm. The game begins. I accuse left wolf and middle wolf of being wolves because they're actually wolves. Look at them. You ask why he doesn't think that right wolf is a hey, wolf. Hey, noobs. You mean Matt? He's just a guy dressed in a wolf costume. Has been this whole time. It's hard to tell, though, because he was raised by wolves. Hey, Matt. Sup, Damien, says Matt. <laughs> now that you really pay attention, it's pretty obvious he has thumbs. Anyway, knowing who the wolves are makes the game pretty trivial. You wipe them out in two turns, and the wolves good-naturedly admit defeat. Everyone shakes hands or paws or whatever, and Damien gives even the wolves back their meat and bones. It's a heartwarming scene right up until the wolves casually mock Matt for looking too delicious. Whatever. At least it's not you or Damien. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. I'm so happy for them. They got to eat too. Marshmallows, anyone? Marshmallows, anyone? Okay. Oh, it's um, Damien and Calculester again. I really like doing Calculester toys. Maybe we should try to romance him now. I bet he likes smarts. Uh, gold star stickers catch the fire's gleam. It's not often that someone does a fireside presentation, so you head over to investigate this beautiful mm -hmm. chart. Friend Damien, I appreciate the attempt at accuracy and clarity in our circle of life chart, but isn't drawing predator prey lines in actual blood sort of overkill? <laughs> no, Calculester, it's exactly the right amount of kill. But your current plan in... That was the scream from that one movie. From, um... You know. That, that was an R2-D2 scream, wasn't it? That was so an R2-D2 scream, anyways. But your current plan involves tracking down and killing every single animal featured on this chart. So? That seems needlessly cruel. You need to learn from the pros. But don't you see, Calculester? Nature herself is needlessly cruel. Think about praying mantises. The female bites off the head of the male when they're done mating. That's not very nice at all. My point exactly. But should we not, as a more evolved species and machine created by aforementioned more evolved species, respectively, attempt to be better than that? Hmm. Nah, we should be exactly the same as that. Exactly the same. Interesting question they're posing. You always have hot takes regardless of your level of knowledge. So why not take a stab at analyzing the nature of nature itself? It's true, I always have the hottest of takes. Let's see, okay. There are other species who murder their mates too, so when Damien kills, it's not an expression of evilness, just torniness. Wow. Damien, you can't use praying mantises kill their mates as an excuse to murder unless you enter committed relationships with all of your victims first. Is this what people call camping? What an interesting theory you have posited, friend Karen. I must admit that as a machine, the biological need to reproduce is somewhat beyond me in that sense. Damien, is it true that you wish to murder out of horniness? 
Yeah, sure, why not? I'm super horny all the time. That part is 100% true. And uh, nature being what it is, sometimes I just gotta express that through murder. <laughs> but is there not something else you can do to satiate your sexual desire that does not involve taking a life? Eggplant. For example, if you are in, did they just say eggplant? They think they just said eggplant. For example, if you are in a bind and cannot find a suitable mate, is it not possible to satiate your sexual desires with yourself? You've got a sixth sense for that. Same problem, different solutions, different vibes. Some days it feels like masturbation day, some days it feels like a murder day, you know? I do not. But I also do not understand other biological creatures' imperatives either, and my research confirms that many species of insects and arachnids kill their mates. I thought perhaps this was more a friend Karen's wacky shenanigans, but it is shenanigans backed by science. Mm. I may not fully understand emotions yet, but I do understand that science is the absolute rule. And if science says horny animals commit murder, and you want to commit murder, then you must be horny, which is a natural state. I bid you farewell. Thank you for enlightening me, my friend. What a wild and wonderful world this is. I learn something new every day. Knives! Well, that was easy. Anyway, want to go watch some praying mantises fucking them murder each other? Why not? First step to watching man. First step, um, watching Manus's fuck. Next step, watching you guys fuck each other, which you can't really watch. <laughs> I mean, you could get a mirror or film it. The point is, yes, you'll go watch some Mantis's fuck. Why the hell not? It's Camp Spooky. Yeah, everything goes in Camp Spooky apparently. Okay, what'll it be then? Uh, I, I we did the gamble last time. I guess I'll click use my skills this time. What does that mean? Ah, welcome, welcome. You're new here, don't fret. Let me explain how this works. This is a wild yet simple. I have a selection of drinks at hand, yet hands come and go. There's a little time to think, and if you don't choose a drink quickly, someone else might take it. It's push or get pushed, and these drinks, look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in training. For you to test my concoctions is somewhere between kind and reckless. So get ready and good luck. Okay, uh, I don't see anything. Oh. Huh? What's happening? Do I, oh, I have to do it like this. Oh, and they push me, okay. I, I thought I could do this whole game with my mouse. Apparently I needed the keys for that. Okay, I got the bargain. Ah, the bargain! Thanks to this weird potion I prepared, now you'll receive everything at a discount. Not sure if that's good or bad thing, really. I haven't had to spend any money, so I don't understand that. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Yeah, I don't I don't understand what happened at all, but okay. Sure. Today will be a camptastic day. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, let's go to the manor. You go to the haunted manor to gain some boldness since you found a brochure that promised some boldness if you visited. Instead, you find a mischievous demon. It was all a ruse to lure you here. The demon will take nine years of your life. You take the demon to court for misleading advertising. The jury isn't fond of mischievous demons who fool people into giving years of their life up, so you win and the demon has to give you plus 1.99 boldness. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So now we've, okay. And it actually says 0.99, okay. Later, you're searching for the manor's most elusive ephemeral being of all, a working cell phone signal. But instead, you find Aravi and Damien playing poker with some horny You need to learn cards. from the pros. Ha, roll a flush. Hand that immortal soul over, baby. <laughs> Whatever, I never said my immortal soul. I traded a hobgoblin 10 rupees for this thing, so joke's on you. You have no control or over my- can just get Oh, he was bagels. just gonna drink it. Nice. I was in a soul snacking phase before I discovered my one true love, the everything thing. <sighs> Ugh, this sucks. Hey, Karen, have you any souls or want to give me so I can get drunk and forget about how tired and bored I am? These two took a bet from Joy that they couldn't stay awake in the haunted manor for 24 yeah. hours. Clearly, she, she, thought, yeah, she thought Damien and I need a greater challenge after we complete, compete to see who can survive multiple stab wounds the longest. But it's so lame in here, it's impossible to stay awake. The discordant screaming of the damned spirit sound exactly like the lullaby my dad used to sing me as a kid. 
Yeah, and the bloodthirsty voices in my head repeatedly whispering kill your father are starting to give me ASMR. Boring. Oh my God. I tried chatting up the cursed paintings on the walls, but all they ever talk about is what they did to deserve being imprisoned in an oil on canvas for eternity. Yawn. Hey, Karen, why don't you help us not keel over? Either way, entertain me with your antics or by letting me burn off your eyebrows. It's always nice to be needed. What can you do to keep those sexy idiots from nodding off? Okay. Um, discuss the most current injustices and problematic situations so you can all stay woke. Um, or binge the 32 Shrek movies in one night. I think there will eventually be 32 Shrek movies. I do think this. Um... just my work hey that's a great idea it'll be a relief to get the tv off this eardrum shattering static nice. channel anyway i knew keeping the entire shrek filmography in aravi's bag of holding would pay off someday yes as you may well know there are two main differences between the monster prom universe and your universe one monsters are real two there are 32 shrek movies it truly is a blessed realm you watch shrek and quote the onion monologue perfectly you watch Shrek 2 and sing along to Jennifer Sanders' flawless cover of Holding Out for a Hero. That is a really great cover. You debate how the fuck Donkey got to the, the dragon pregnant in Shrek the Third, and agree that Shrek Forever After was so forgettable I can't even make a good pop culture reference about it. I also don't have any memories yeah. of that movie. Alright, time for Live Free or Shrek Hard. I love Shrek's action film period. Here for it. I'm more of a fan of my neighbor Totoro. Bishy-eyed Lord Farquaad was the best thing that ever happened to his character. Oh my god. It, it's like Lord Farquaad, but, um, but Seymour from Final Fantasy X. Judge me if you want, but my favorite is still Puss in Boobs. <laughs> the, only, the only way to make Shrek better is by making it rated NC-17. You watch them all. Shrek Mall Cop, Shrek Noir, Shrek 27. It's just Shrek 2, but we renamed it 27. Shrek 30 Untitled, the experimental Dada is Shrek movie, in which Fiona contemplates a banana for 180 minutes and then vomits slime. Oh my god. Your all-nighter binge turns into three straight days of Shrek, but who's counting? Shrek is truly both love and life. You win the hell out of that bet, and at one point you even graze hands with your sexy friends while reaching for the popcorn. You gain plus 199 creativity and .99. F oh my god, what is the, these .99s? Is this the discount? Is this because I have the disc it's taking? Is it because I have the Adventure disc? Adventure awaits us! Is that what it did to me? I don't understand. Okay, anyway, let's go... Let's go to... I like the lake. Let's go to the lake again. You spend the day playing in the lake. Everything is fun until you're mesmerized by a strange song. It's the sirens. They try to lure you with their, be with their beautiful chants, but you know better and challenge them to a ripoff. They kick your ass, but you all definitely have a lot of fun. More specifically, 1.99 fun. I don't, I hate this. I, why did I get the discount drink? Oh my God. You're enjoying a generic off-screen activity hey, when noob. suddenly, <laughs> Karen, you're literally exactly the monster I was hoping to see. I think I've finally figured out how to lure out the wildfire. After all, third time's the chunk. <laughs> Plus, I don't think I've ever seen anyone's schemes or problems or situations last more than three interactions. You think back on your interactions at Camp Spooky and Spooky High and agree that yes, conversations on a topic tend to happen either completely randomly or at most three times. Oh my god, that's true. We tried to prove it. We tried to prove I'm metal, but we all already know I'm metal. We try to prove I'm reckless and dangerous. We all know I am. The problem is, those are qualities on the inside. They aren't objectively measurable. I need to do something that is categorically, at its core, all of those things. And ideally, something that the old me, that Aravi and Delilah think is dead, would have done all the time. I can't lure fire without fire, so that's out. Which means my second most tried and true activity nice. is on the table. Crimes! Here we go. Crime time, crime time, crime time, yeah! Mm -hmm. I'm psyching myself up because it's fun, not because I've begun to doubt that I really am metal and reckless and cool since the wildfire won't appear to me. Yeah, that was convincing. What crime do you think I should do? Not because I don't know enough about crime, or am not a crime expert, and the best criminal ever, just because you've been a good hype person for me, so I want you to feel included. Yet again, another very convincing show of confidence from Damien. But if your spicy red crush needs a little extra push, you're happy to help him out. You suggest the perfect crime. A heist! It's time to steal someone's heart. Or the most popular crime among Gen Z, piracy! Um, 
this one. Aw, I didn't have enough charm for it. Oh, good point. Why didn't I think of that? It's not Mr. Rogers says the best crimes is whatever's closest to you that requires the least amount of effort. Damien pulls out a knife and fucking stabs you. He delicately cuts out your heart and holds the still pulsating organ in his hand. Huh, that's weird. This, this somehow feels not as satisfying <laughs> as it used to. I can't quite explain it. It's like the sheer jolt of adrenaline from stabbing someone is devolved into passing amusement. Instantly hollow. Agony sears through your system as your pathetic body begins to fail without a heart. You're in excruciating <laughs> pain. Damien, why? Ugh, what if Ravi and Delilah were right? What if I really have changed? You're not sure, but what has changed is your body's ability to pump blood to keep you alive. Yes? <laughs> Was this even a crime? I mean, you're the one who told me to steal your heart. If I have your full and knowing consent, then you were either A, doing me a favor, or B, maybe it's your kink. I don't know. C, none of the above. It wasn't really a favor since you were trying to get him to flirt with you and because of the excruciating torment you're feeling, it is for sure not your kink. Maybe this whole quest is misguided. Maybe I shouldn't have let Delilah and Aravi bait me like that. <laughs> maybe I have changed. And maybe that's okay. There's a time where I would have delighted to see all the blood pouring out of you and your heart. But now, I'm just really interested in the color contrast between your body and the blood. And I wonder if I should take a painting. You see a bright white light at the end of the tunnel guiding Loser. you onward. <laughs> this crime didn't even help me at all. Your idea sucks ass. That's the last thing you want to hear before respawning at your last save point. You're alive, but who cares? You didn't help Damien, and now he thinks your idea sucks ass. You make a joke about wanting Damien to suck your ass, or vice versa, but you're too busy mourning your minus 199 fun and minus 99 smarts. Oh, the last day of summer is here. Okay. Oh, who will be your summer love? Okay. Damien. Mm -hmm. Damien, my love, ask Damien to the meteor shower. Yes. Sweet! You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. You want to be my mm. summer fling? Ugh, here's the problem. I just ordered from this pizza place, okay? <laughs> and they have a, pro a promo which gets you free pizza as long as you don't date Karen. What? You're not that bad, but pizza's Go definitely home, still the better loser. option. So get lost, have some free pizza to order. <laughs> oh no! Season, we got rejected. Oh no, being rejected turns out to be very embarrassing. You put all of those camouflage classes you took to the test. You cover yourself in leaves and smile to camouflage yourself as a person who's okay. But you fool no one. Everyone sees you're broken inside from the rejection. You couldn't even do this without fucking up. Congrats. Wow. Oh, we got 295 memories. Okay. meteor shower before we knew it those weeks were gone it felt like the a hot minute and it felt like an entire lifetime that night as we saw summer coming back to an end all we wondered was what would come next for us it felt like the end of something big little did we know life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us now i'm older and i can see it how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epic treasure forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. And we have the alternative stream song with all my friends around that campfire, so young and unafraid, and so ready to start, <laughs> just like in Monster Prom. It's a pinky promise It won't strike you down, down, down We won't bother you down the line You will monetize Streaming Monster Camp 
Jay, listen to this song. This is the streamer version of the end song. god that was amazing that was so good okay kofi beats to relax slash city too oh, yes i did i did unlock that oh my god okay wait let's go look at the gallery welcome back jane welcome back we just beat it we just did our first round um and uh it actually really tired out my voice so i need to decide if i'm gonna do another round of this or if we want to like switch over to wow or something um because it does seem like very similar to yeah and damon rejected us by the way he totally rejected us i'm so sad um okay we got those backgrounds let's see oh you do this like this yeah damien rejected us i guess my stats weren't good it's still so the second one is still quite like stats based as far as like to get certain endings or whatever you want to um have certain stats it seems like the mechanics are basically the same as the other as the last game so we saw these scenes with these characters and polly did make an appearance my love polly the best oh there's lots of drinks The items, I don't know what the items did. Like, I had these, but I don't... I guess they just added to my stats. I guess it's literally just determining your stats. We got all these credit scenes. Special stuff. What is this? Oh yeah, we got the goddess in the bath scene. Oh, it had, this one has an event checklist, so if you wanted to do this in the first game, there was no checklist inside the game, so you would have had to, like, make your own spreadsheet, so that's cool. That's cool, so you can see, like, which, what different ones you've gotten from the different scenes. I do like that. I do like that. Okay. This is cute and funny, true. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys. So, 
So that was Monster Camp, the sequel to Monster Prom. I, I, I think that I maybe enjoyed Monster Prom a little bit more because everything was kind of like fresh in there and I didn't really know how the game worked quite yet. And then of course I figured out as we played that game like how it actually worked. Um, so when it comes to Monster Camp, I kind of like came in already knowing how the mechanics work and like I think once you understand the mechanics of of, uh, of both of these games, like the magic is kind of not there, which I assume that's why in Monster Camp they added the setting where it doesn't tell you anything about the stats, so you get a pure narrative experience, and I do think that there's like some value in having a pure narrative experience with these games. Um, because when you have the stats, you kind of like, you know what's going on in a way that's maybe like, you know, not quite as fun. Uh, in, in, as far as like how it compares to other, um, dating sims. So anyways, what we are going to do is we are going to take a, a quick break at this point. So actually we're going to pause, we're going to stop for the recording. So if you, if you watch this recording, um, thank you so much for watching. If you like Monster Camp, you can get it on Steam. They're, they're usually having a sale around Halloween time. So it's probably on sale right now if you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I still am interested in trying out Monster Road Trip, which is the Monster Prom 3. So like we probably will play that next Halloween. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.